Hi, you guys. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification button if you don't mind. So I just wanted to say that Hurricane Nicole is just a few hours away. I will be losing my electric and internet, and this time I'm not going to a hotel because, honestly, I can't afford it at the moment. So... I am going to be buckling down and doing this storm here. It's supposed to hit our area with a cat one, and many of the residents where I am have hurricane fatigue from Ian, so it's stressful, and I hope, I'm praying that this storm is unlike Ian in one way, which is it's not as bad as Ian was. Ian, we underestimated. And so I'm hoping that Nicole is an easier storm. What can I tell you? So anyway, I'm gonna go and do a bunch of videos and hopefully I can get them up uh, so you guys will have content for the rest of this week from me. But if not, you know what happened. I didn't get it up in time. So anyway, this is the hurricane. This is Nicole, that's my windy app. See how it's hitting Florida? This is right now. Um, I'm doing this video at like 10 a.m. See that? Wendy's a great app if you live in Florida, by the way, because it really shows what's happening. A lot of uh, people who sail and stuff use it to know the wind. So anyway, it's supposed to be a Cat 1 only um, it's, and then go to a tropical storm. Uh, but so was the last one. <laughs> Ian, and you saw what that did. We still haven't had our area cleaned up even from Ian. So it's like there's debris everywhere. I don't know. Wish us luck. What can well, I let me you? get into Girardi's arrest, which is why you're really watching this video. Mwah. By the way, my eyes are good, you guys. Some of you asked. So today is day 13 and my eyes are better. They're getting better. So let's just fingers crossed it continues. I know, right? My friends on Patreon were like, my gosh, Dana, two hurricanes, eye surgery. <laughs> what else are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Life, isn't it fun? It's like a, a board game, really. Anyway, keep a sense of humor. Okay, so this came out yesterday, November 8th, and it was kind of shocking that this was really one of the few places uh, yesterday that published this. Uh, it made me think that there was no press release sent out by the Justice Department about this arrest. And I did look and I couldn't find one, which I thought was odd because they almost always do send out a press release of some sort, even if it's on a state level versus a federal level. And this one, I couldn't find anything. Um, but anyway, maybe it came out today. All I can tell you is it says, breaking ex Girardi Keys CFO jailed on wire fraud charge by Brandon Lowry. Brandon is, uh, I think he was in The Housewife and the Hustler with me, actually. Um, he is a big writer at Law 360. Um, okay, so it says November 8th, 2022, 6.22 p.m. EST. This is literally like last night. Federal, Federal authorities have jailed the former chief financial officer of Girardi Keys on one or more charges of wire fraud, according to a criminal complaint filed in Baltimore. Christopher Kamen, 49, was locked up Monday on allegations he committed wire fraud on September 16th, 2020, in Los Angeles, according to the complaint lodged by an FBI special agent. Few other details were available Tuesday, as an affidavit describing the facts of the case was, was restricted from public view. Okay, so I wanted to talk about this for a second and share some other gossip about Erica. So here's what I think happened. The FBI swooped in on Chris Kamen uh, in California at some point. They started an investigation. He decided because things were coming potentially that he wanted to move to Baltimore, I guess. Um, this would have slowed the process down. California feds, the FBI in California, the federal government in California, that you know their officers would then have to get this transferred to Baltimore jurisdiction where he is, and those feds officers would have to go get him there. Okay, so they then uh, do all this rigmarole and they get it done, and boom, the Baltimore FBI agents swoop in and they arrest him. So this is the beginning of the arrests, I think. 
And, and he's the beginning because he is the one who literally did the wire that moved money on this particular date out of the bank account. Now I would bet my money, bet my money, this is just a bet, this is a prediction, I'm not psychic. I'd say David Lira is next. Who else? Don't know. Possibly Tom Girardi. We'll have to see if they buy that he has Alzheimer's. And maybe other people, who knows? That they might have done, you know, the federal government doesn't mess around when they're doing their deep dive. Believe me, like whatever storyline you're putting out there, they're gonna cut right through that crap. And they're gonna say, well, I, I appreciate that that's your version of things, but this is ours. And then it's up to you to fight it. Good luck, because Justice Department has unlimited funding, <laughs> pretty much. They don't really, but they, they do now, really. In case you don't know who David Lira is, David Lira is Tom Girardi's son-in-law. He's married to his daughter, but he also was a sort of partner in Girardi Keys, but not technically. He's made sure to argue that. Um, he, you know, the question is, what did he know about how Tom was treating the finances of the company? Certainly, Christopher Kamen ha had to have known something because he was the chief financial officer. And just by definition of that role, you would know what was going on within the constructs of Girardi Keys's finances because you can't be CFO and not know. So I would assume that's why they started with him. But they now, anyone who's implicated, you know, that knew this was sort of happening and didn't tell, that's actually a, a crime. I know, you have to tell, especially when you're a lawyer. Anyway, you may be wondering what this arrest was around, and there are so many things it could possibly be, but what I'm assuming was that in 2020, uh, Chris must have suddenly transferred a large amount of money out of the client account into an account that it shouldn't have been. And therefore he has committed wire fraud, uh, something deemed fraudulent, right? Uh, now, what I can't get over and what I'm wondering if the feds are also gonna come on is, you know that Girardi Keys took out a PPP loan uh, on April 15, 2020 for one and a half million. That's from the Patreon. There's the document that proves it. So I'm like, isn't that fraud? Because I, I mean, he obviously knew the company what didn't have the money to repay it. And, uh, you know, I'm sure they exaggerated on that application with how many attorneys was working at the office and actually damaged. It. So let's get into Erica. Okay, you guys. So this is from my feed the other day. And Bravo Snarkside caught this communication between Erica and Kathy Hilton and a fan. And it basically says this, so disappointing to watch at Kyle Richards 18 not stand up to you three women and allow you to come between her and Kathy Hilton. I've never felt so let down by the horrific behavior and to see Kyle doing absolutely nothing about it. Very, very, very sad at Kathy Hilton. You are loved and wanting and wanted to by the fans and we thank you for speaking up. Okay, yeah, all right, anyway, I thought that was my eyes, but it was just the writing. And then Kathy Hilton responds back to this fan with a thank you and love. Here's the clinker though. At Kathy Hilton, this is from Erica, okay? Do not come to my page to criticize at Kyle Richards 18. The season is over. Handle your family problems in person and not on social media. This has Erica Jane Girardi vibe, doesn't it? So what do I think about this? And I wanted to tell you, first of all, if Erica really felt truly the way she commented, she would have deleted the comment because she controls that. So she didn't. She wanted to publicly say something, okay? And what she wanted to show is that she's standing up for Kyle, which is interesting because, of course, Erica uh, was so loving towards Kathy initially about not even going to her uh, Paris's wedding because she was worried about her reputation. Anyway, the whole thing was blah, blah. Here's the right? thing. I find Erica Jane Girardi commenting on anyone's communication as being really hypocritical, given the fact that she sucks at it so badly. 
Um, and I, am, as you notice, commented that like I still am nauseous over her analogy of a plane, of what would you do in a plane crash? You know, you'd have to take care of yourself first with the mask and then you take care of the people next to you, like meaning children. Um, you know, it's just so gross given the fact that Tom Girardi, you know, stole money from plane victims' families. Right. OK, so it just she's completely tone deaf or she's intentionally done it, which makes her evil. So I don't know which it is, but you guys can make your own choice on that. But the bottom line is she did that because she's trying to deflect. Erica Jane Girardi knows that the SHIT is hitting the fan and she's just trying any way she can to sort of get in the fans' good graces again. Now, Kyle has a lot of fans, so I'm sure they appreciated that comment that uh, Erica made that appealed to her. By the way, you guys, I um, am, I found this website that found, finds out about fake followers on Instagram, and I'm trying to confirm if it's really works or not, or if it's BS, as soon as I do, I'm gonna do a video about my findings, okay? I'm, I'm in uh, touch with the, the uh, people now. They have like a strict sign up process. They won't let just anybody sign up, but I'll tell you, because I know I've never bought one damn follower. As you guys know, see how slow my followers have gone up? Like, I mean, maybe I'm just really unpopular. There's that, but <laughs> it's slow. So I was like, Hmm, people seem to have a lot of followers, so I anyway. wanted to look into this a little. So I, I went to a company that does marketing and they advise brands and they tell them how many fake followers people have so you don't overpay someone you know, who actually doesn't. So I'm trying to get uh, access to my account because I want to know, do they say I have fake followers? Because I know 100% I don't. So if I see zero on mine and then I see a percentage on the others, I'm going to know it's true. So stay tuned for that video. I digress. Anyway, I believe there's going to be more arrests, which is why they've kept this very quiet compared to what normally happens. And I think we're going to know very soon who those people are. So it's about to get exciting. Grab your popcorn. See what you think. I'm wondering whether Erica will be implicated. Um, in the civil case, she hasn't been so far. They've been saying that there's no uh, evidence that she knew of the wrongdoing that Tom has done. However, there's still attorneys proving their case in court saying she was like the front woman kind of um, going out in the social media and on the show and, and telling a storyline that protected Tom Girardi intentionally. And so we'll have to see that playing out in the civil case. Now, most people have said they don't believe that Erica will have any criminal charges. Ronald Richards didn't think so. Jay Adelson didn't think so. Uh, NT didn't think so. So these, these are people I would imagine that know, but I just... God, the, the government is so resourceful. I don't know. I wouldn't underestimate them ever in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see. Anyway, justice. Let's hope justice is done because let me tell you something. It, it isn't always. It isn't always. Um, hmm. I'm passionate on this topic. I'll hold. <laughs> okay. Bye, you guys. Wish me luck.